Hey, would you look at them corset advertisements? You've been away from town too long. It's the first time you've been right in two months. Tell me some more about them gold nuggets, Gabe. I only said that there were some good paying mines around here, so the pecking should have been real good. All right, well, we tried your way, now we try mine. I'd like to see what one of them corsets looks like when it's all filled out. That sort of fun takes the kind of gold dust we didn't find. Uh, we can't come up no emptier than we have. How far is Sacramento? For me, six months in jail. The sheriff made that real clear if he ever saw me again. What about Frisco? Hey, I know a better place. That's closer. You ever been to Stockton? The girls are prettier in Frisco. Yeah, so are they in Reno. And I'm a dead man if I show my face in either place. Just take it from me, Gabe. They never pull in the sidewalks in Stockton. Well, I'm ready for anything. Let's get going. All right. You don't want to knock the guild off the frame. Now, you're sure about this, Nick? I promise you she'll love it. All right, let's see it. Oh, no, not now. Right now. Well, no, no, I've got it all wrapped up. Now, why can't you wait till we get home? Now, look, this is a present for Mother from all of us. So after I've seen it, I'll tell you whether my name goes on the card or not. Have you seen it? Well, we got Nick's word. It's a good picture. Yeah, well, I'll take his word for hoof and mouth disease, but art is another matter. Well, now that you put it that way, you want to do it or shall I? Allow me. I do all the work and I get all the complaints. A picture of a roundup? Now, there's something she really needs. I like it. You paid too much for it. What do you mean I paid too much for it? The fellow down in the gallery said this, uh, this fellow here, Charles Russell, well, when he dies, it's gonna be worth a fortune. Yeah, we take the loss and go gunning for him right now. It's a mighty big calendar. Where's the numbers? What are you talking about, calendar? Why, they're giving them away at the store. <laughs> I'm taking the first train back to San Francisco. Hey, wait a minute, Nick. We've got the original here. Seems to me that this makes that the valuable picture. Lucked out again. What do you mean, lucked out again? I told you I liked it. Come on, let's get it on home. Mrs. Barkley asked me to stop at the Anderson Ranch for something. I guess it'll take me about an hour before I'm back. Oh, good. You go on, Silas. Now that we're big art collectors, uh, our celebration seems to be in order. Wrap it up, Nick. Wrap it up, Silas. Ah, mighty fancy clothes. Always dressed for Sunday. Well, that's what separates aristocrats from us colonials. Well, I always was partial to thoroughbred. Now you're not going to go make a jackass out of yourself again, are you? Well, I just might. A 
dollar, he doesn't get one word out of her. You're on. Get out of here. Take at least four. <laughs> Good morning, mademoiselle. Uh, I'd like to ask you a favor. Uh, I'd like to have your opinion on a painting I bought up in San Francisco. Good morning, Barclay. Marquis? Papa, it seems that Mr. Barclay is trying to bring culture to Stockton. You have assumed a monumental task for yourself, monsieur. Oh? Bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. Hey, boss! Boss. When will these clods learn a Marquis never called a boss? We got problems, boss. A forest fire broke out just east of Granite City. What is the danger to the mine? What about the town? They're trying to build fire breaks. If they don't hold, your mine will go, Nick, and so will the town. All right, everybody, let's settle down. Quiet. Get on with this. Now, gentlemen, most of us here are miners, so we've all got the same problem. Wilson, you saw it. Suppose you give us the bad news. Well, it's like I told the boss here. I never saw worse. Those flames were jumping dry creek beds. Now, there ain't no handmade fire breaks gonna stop it. All right, Wilson. That is our situation, gentlemen. Now, we must agree on a procedure to save the mines. It seems to me that our first consideration is to save Granite City. I hope you're not insinuating that the lives of those people are of no concern to me. Then I take it we're agreed. If we save the town, the people there can help us rebuild the mines. Uh, let us examine the relative values, Mr. Barclay. The timbering of each of our mines is infinitely more expensive to replace than all the shacks in Granite City. But if a shack is all a man owns, it's as important to him as a mine to us. Gentlemen, we are wasting time on a side issue. A big enough fire break would save both the town and the mines. Look, boss, I'll match my time on an axe handle with anybody here. But with every man jack in the valley, we can't build a fire break big enough or fast enough. I am not thinking of using an axe to make a fire break. There's a better way. Nitroglycerin. It's a good idea. Who's going to carry it? Mr. Carter will, for one. He's the best nitro man in the mother load. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hold on here. Charlie. You won't be taking that stuff to a nice, cool mine, you know. You'll be taking it right in the middle of a forest fire. Nick, I know what I'm doing. So do we. And you're killing yourself. He's an expert. And he's taking a risk. For $2,000. On the mine owner's behalf, I have agreed to have the money waiting in the bank. Charlie, I don't know what your problem is. But whatever it is, it isn't worth it. Jared, I need the money. You won't be doing me a favor by killing this deal. Carter will need help. Who else could use $2,000? Uh, me and my brother, uh, Norval, we'll go. Yeah, that's right. Any others? Will that be enough? It'll have to be. Now, may I have a show of hands from the mine owners on contributions to pay these gentlemen? You'll be doing me a favor.
All right, now. Nice and easy. Yes, sir, Mr. Carter. $2,000 before you. What's we got left? Enough for baby to fill the rest of the four bottles in. Oh, miss, you shouldn't be here. You're a fine man for risking your life for the brethren. Well, they're doing something for me, too, sister. I'm getting well paid for it. A workman is worthy of his hire. Have faith. I brought you this. Oh, well, much obliged, sister. I'll be praying for you. Sister, I wish you'd get back where it's safe. <laughs> I bought these for you and your brother. Well, thank you, ma'am. I guess we can use all the help we can get. Now, I'll we'll see if you can find some more sacks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks very much, fellas. You're doing a lot more than we are, Charlie. Hey, miss. You better get back. It's all right. She came to see me. Looks like that's why I wanted the 2,000. How dangerous is it? Gail, I made you some promises. There's no other way I can keep them. Am I really worth that much to you? If I didn't think so, I wouldn't be going. Oh, come back. Please, come back safe. I need you. That says how much I need you. Gail, I look in the mirror once in a while, and from what looks back, I never figured I had a chance of something like you. You're worth anything to me. I'll never be sorry. Girl, I'm going to do my best to make sure that you aren't either. I'll be waiting. All right, Jim. Let's go. Well, that does it. Call me an old fool if you want, but it's more than I ever had. Good luck, Charlie. Charlie. I've seen smoother washboards. We could have gone by way of Yuba Trail, but it makes this look like a big city street. <laughs> Just like in the war, son. The bullet that misses you ain't the one to worry about.
Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Barclay. It's all here, boss. Six thousand. Put it in the bank. Gentlemen, I propose a toast to Carter's success. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Now, I got an idea for a toast. Huh? To the Marquis, right? For figuring out how to save the mines. Hmm? I'll see why not. Just keep thinking of all the things you can buy when we get back. We already got it spent. 200 acres of choice bottom line. Back in town, it kind of looked like you had plans, too. There's ways of being a drifter besides moving from place to place. I figure I've found me an answer. Fellas, huh? Sure puts a man in need of a drink, don't it? Just to increase our offer. Three thousand dollars per man. Three thousand dollars. I will put up the difference from my own money. One thing, I doubt very much you find one drop of nitro within a hundred miles. Not correct, Mr. Barclay. There are ten gallons being mixed right now. I wired San Francisco. The railroad is giving us fullest cooperation. A special train will have it here by six o'clock in the morning. That's it, boys. Three thousand a man. Now, you'll never get a better payday. Just step up. Boys, think about it. Now, you won't get many offers like that. Thank you. I will find men. You got one man. Me. Three thousand. Well, you know what that'd make me? Hmm. Marquis, please. That's your answer, Toby. You ain't worth the nitro it would take to blow you up. That's enough, Rogers. Three thousand. You change your tune. You crawl to me. Oh, you.
got trouble, boys. What's the matter, Mac? My farm's burned. Everything. What are you talking about? Your farm is miles from the fire. Not anymore. A wind shifted. It isn't just Granite City now. Fire's on its way to Stockton. <laughs> once told me that it only took 28 pounds of pressure to make nitro blow up. There's more than that right there. Hundred and fifty-five degrees, three minutes. That'll set it off. Uh, about that much in a bottle. I'd say that's about a pint. Flatten this whole building. Ten gallons have to be toted right up next to that fire. That same fella told me he'd seen nitro go off a cliff and not blow up. At the same time, he'd seen it go off for no reason at all. Well, I've heard people talk about the Barkley luck. Let's hope they're right. What am I going to say to Mrs. Barkley? Miss Audra? You're not going to say anything. The less they know about this, the better. No sense getting them worried, too. What are you asking me to do? Worry all by myself? Well, now you're not going to be worrying all by yourself. But they're going to ask me about you. What am I going to tell them? Just tell them we're staying in town overnight. Mr. Heath, you know I can't look Mrs. Barkley in the eye and lie. But you won't be lying, Silas, because we are staying in town all night, aren't we? You sure this is what you got to do? Now, you go on back to the ranch. It'll be safe. The fire can't jump the river. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't like it? Well, so maybe we better think about getting some equipment together. Well, now, the first thing would be horses. Horses that aren't fire shy. I think the best place to find them would be down at the fire station. I'll look into it right away. What about a wagon? Well, your smoothest ride would be a stagecoach. I know something smoother if you fellas aren't superstitious. What? Beckett's new hearse. What? A hearse? Thinking about those special built springs. He had that hearse custom made in St. Louis. Claims it gives the smoothest ride in town. You're talking about his pride and joy. You'll never get that away from him. He'd sooner let his wife tote that nitro on her back. Maybe I can talk him out of it. He's right, Nick. That's what we need. I'm gonna go over to the office for a little while. Office? Yeah, I better get our personal affairs in order. We don't want to leave Mother in order with a lot of loose ends. Check into my will real fast, will you? That, my friend, was on the top of my list. <laughs> I'll get started on that hearse. You gonna come back here after you pick up the horses? Uh, no, I thought I'd uh, run by the Marquis' house, check up on uh, time of arrival of that train. But we already know that. Well, I think I should check into it anyway. You gonna tie up a few loose ends yourself, Nick? Mm-hmm. French and pretty? Mm hmm Good luck. Mm hmm Nick, buy you a drink? No, no, no. I'm going over to the Marquis' house. Wait till the Marquis hears you're going. He'll drown you in a bucket of champagne. Well, now I'm more interested in what the Mademoiselle's going to do. Toby. Well, Toby, old boy. You can play the big man tonight, even if it's only for one night.
You can count on this team, Nick. Best fire eaters we got. It's just what we need. Yes, sir. You get them to a fire, they'll take you into it. All right, then, uh, then you have them at the delivery stable, say, 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. You'll have them. Harness, comb, and curry. Just well rested, thank you. Well, old fella, I'm sure glad you don't know what you're volunteering for. Five o'clock tomorrow morning. Mr. Barclay. Oh, Mr. Beckett, could I speak to you a minute? Well, I hope you won't be offended, Mr. Barclay, but I'm in a hurry. I want to get my hearse out of town as soon as possible. Well, the fact is, that's just what I want to do for you. Well, that's very kind, Mr. Barclay, and I'm very grateful, but I don't allow anyone to drive this beauty but me. Well, Mr. Beckett, I won't waste any more of your time. I guess you're the most important man in Stockton right now. Me? Well, you see, the safety of this whole town depends on your help. And you help save it, and everyone in Stockton will be beholden to you till the day they die. They will? Mr. Barkley, I'll do anything I can. Well, I knew you'd see it just that way, Mr. Beckett. I'll have the blacksmith get busy on your hearse right away. My hearse? But we needed to cart nitro to the fire. Nitro? Oh, Mr. Barkley, please. Well, now, Mr. Beckett, you've been claiming this hearse gives the smoothest ride in town. Now, you weren't lying to folks now, were you? I've had no complaints. Well, this whole town will never forget what you did for them. Like you always say, in their hour of sorrow. I thought you were going to the auxiliary team. But I'd have told them I had a headache, which would have been true had I gone. <laughs> I, uh, I don't suppose you'd like to go in my place. As my dear mother once told me, don't ask anyone to do anything you wouldn't do yourself. Uh huh. And as your dear mother also said, ask a foolish question and you'll get a foolish answer. <laughs> Speaking of foolish questions, how many candles do you want on your birthday cake? Well, as long as I've done enough lying for one day. Put them all on. Twenty-six. Twenty-six? Well, you're only as old as you feel. And right now, I feel young enough to start all over again. What would you change? Not a thing. Now, what could I improve on? My sons? You? Well, there have been a few basic suggestions now and then. Well, as of this moment, you will do just fine. <laughs> Better be careful. I'm going to hold that over your head. Good idea. Until the next time. It's silent. Did our painting arrive? Yes, ma'am, there it is. Did Jared see it? He made Mr. Nick open it up. What did he say? He said Mr. Nick made a fine choice. I'm going to peek at it. Oh, you don't have to do that, Miss Ardra. Here's what it looks like. Jared passed on this? It looks a lot better without the dates and the advertisement. Oh, she sure will be surprised. Where are the boys, Silas? They had to stay in town. There's trouble, Miss Barkley. Big trouble. What kind of trouble? There's a fire up in Granite City. The wind is bringing it down into the valley. It could reach Stockton. What's being done to fight it? Your sons are doing all they can. They say for you and Miss Aldrin not to worry. If the fire does reach Stockton, they're going to need help. Medicine, blankets, bandages. Let's go, Silas. Mother, the orphanage. I'd better see if the Padre needs any help. Bring the children back with you. The fire's a long way from here. You promise? I promise. Oh, 
Audra, how good to see you. Please come in. The fire, Padre. I, I thought it might be of some help. Well, thank you. But we heard it was up in Granite City. The wind shifted, and they're afraid it's coming here. I assumed you knew from what Mary said. I'm afraid she was speaking from fear. She lost her family in a fire. Well, I think they'll be safer at the ranch. I will tell them. Jared Barkley? Yes? My name is Gail Miller. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I saw you this morning. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to offer my condolences. You saw it? Then you know how he felt about me, how we felt about each other. Well, I... I assume you both cared a great deal. What did he tell you about us? Not exactly. I gathered that he... Well, that he took on the job because of you. That's why I'm here. They say you're the best lawyer in town. What do you need a lawyer for? To get what's coming to me. The bank manager won't believe me. The bank manager won't believe what, Miss Miller? That Carter was going to marry me. We were going to start out on that 2000. You've got to make them give me that money. Well, I'm very sorry. I'm afraid I'm not in a position to take on any new cases right at the moment. Oh, please. Please, I I'm desperate. I quit my job at the saloon, everything, to get our home ready. I have an ascent. You have to understand the bank's position. You two weren't married. Eliminates any automatic right of inheritance. Unless, of course, he left a written will. Please, Miss Miller, don't, don't do that. I... There is one other possibility. Did he state to anyone that he wanted you to have his property? Well, he told you. Well, that was just an assumption on my part. I couldn't swear to it under oath. But you're a lawyer, a big man. They'd believe anything you said. Are you asking me to lie for you? Well, name your own fee. All I can do is wish you the best of luck. Oh, what do you know about luck? I only wish I'm wrong when yours runs out. Yes, monsieur. Oh, I, uh, I come to see the Marquis. The Marquis is not at home, monsieur. Well, then I guess I'll just have to wait for him. Monsieur, I meant the Marquis is home. Oh. But not receiving. Ah. Good evening, monsieur. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm here to see Miss Lacaze. Oh. Uh. Is the mademoiselle expecting you? Well, I wasn't expecting to be here myself. If monsieur will give me his calling card, I will see if the mademoiselle is at home for you. Uh, calling card? Uh, well, I... It, uh... 
Seems though I left it in my other pants. <laughs> well, couldn't you just tell her I'm here? That is not the custom of this household, monsieur. Oh, wait a minute, hold it. We Barclays also have a custom, my friend. We don't like to be shoved. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Barclay. How nice of you to call. Well, I, I, I was just, uh, uh... Henri, why don't you relieve the gentleman of his plant? I'm, uh... Oh, sorry about this. Uh, it's all my fault. It was just a little misunderstanding over calling cards. The fault is mine. I should have informed Henri that a Barclay is always welcome. That will be all, Henri. In fact... I've often wondered why you never called before. Oh, well, I, uh... Well, I guess it was just a, another little misunderstanding. <laughs> Perhaps, now that you're here, would you do me the honor of joining me for dinner? Well, uh... I have to talk to your father about something. Can it wait till tomorrow? My father is in his room. This trouble with the mine has upset him terribly. Oh, well, I agree. We... We shouldn't disturb him tonight, no. And you'd be doing me a great favor. I hate to dine alone. You'd be doing me a favor. Uh, besides, I can't think of a nicer way to spend an evening, mademoiselle. Me, chef. Nick. It sure is a fine thing you're doing, Mr. Beckett. Those were my guarantee of privacy. Yes, sir, a fine thing. We'll have to take those windows out. The windows? That's going to be a rough trip, that glass of crack. Look, Keith, I've got an idea that'll make this trip a whole lot safer. Well, you're talking to the right man. You've got a better wagon? No. But you don't want to be falling down tired when you're carrying that nitro. No argument there. None whatsoever. Good. Then you go clean up and get some rest. Well, they say cleanliness is next to godliness. Maybe a good hot tub's the answer for tomorrow. See you later. I thought you said there was a lot of excitement around this town. I've seen more excitement at a church social. Well, last time I was here, it was wide open. Well, maybe it won't be an entire loss. But her? Come on. It's better than nothing. Would you mind stepping aside, gentlemen? We're only trying to be friendly, ma'am. Would you mind moving? Come on, sister. Where's your brotherly love? Please. Yeah, you, just because you carry that tambourine doesn't mean you're not interested in the man, does it? Man? If you're a man, you'd be out doing something about that fire instead of just wasting time. Fire? The only fire I see is in them pretty eyes of yours. That don't scare me none. Let me see you prove you're a real woman. Oh, she knows what she wants, and it ain't you. <laughs> Leave that wildcat to me. Sister, I'll take you to the saloon now. Saloon? What are you talking about? I, I've never been in a saloon in my life. Well, I bet you never had your dress torn off in the street before, either. Oh, please, go away. Look, I'm just trying to be helpful. There are rooms in the back. Yes, I've heard about them. One of the ladies can sew on your dress. I don't need any help from them, or you either. Why don't you just go away? 
Just go away. you we didn't need a butler. Didn't spill a drop. You know, you're proving this whole valley right. Did you know that? In what way? Well, they keep talking about the Barclay luck. Is it really as good as they say it is? Well, now, they haven't even scratched the surface yet. You know, I came here this evening expecting to storm the Bastille. But I was met by French hospitality at its very best. And nothing lost in the translation, either. Nick, hmm. have you ever been to Paris? No. If you had, you'd understand Papa better. We lost everything with the fall of Louis Napoleon. This is like exile for him. One man's drink is another man's poison. <laughs> he doesn't really hate it. He just can't stand to lose the life he was born to. Well, then he's fighting a losing battle. You know, I had some friends in the South before the war. And they hated to lose the life they loved. But it's, well, it's hard to hold on to something that doesn't exist anymore. With the mine, he's trying to recreate it. Oh, now, this is a very special evening for me. Let's talk about something special. <laughs> what would you suggest? You and me. I'd like that. You said talk. I am sorry, Papa isn't feeling well enough to join us. Shell, that's part of the Barkley luck I was talking about. Even now, in a minute I figure he's going to come crashing in here and spoil a very beautiful dream. Nick, you're a remarkable man. You talk about luck when you're about to lose your mind. We too are about to lose ours, but. You still find time to talk about dreams. Well, uh, our family always figured you do something about your dreams, you help your luck. <laughs> That's what Papa says. If you're willing to pay the price, you can get anything you want out of life. A cigar, Mr. Barclay. Uh, well, I, uh, well, if you don't mind. Oh, no, I'm quite used to men smoking. Thank you, thank you. That will be all for tonight, Davy. Bonne nuit, mademoiselle. Bonne nuit. I understand you're quite an expert with nitroglycerin. Hmm? Well, now, whatever gave you that idea? You don't give Papa his due credit. He's much more aware of the people around here than they think. Well, now, I suggest you follow your Papa's advice. There's nothing quite like uh, awareness. We have a great deal in common, your family and mine. More than I thought. No, I... I mean our gold mines in Greenwich City. Oh, I thought you meant something else we had in common. Nick, mm. we have all the time in the world for that. After that terrible fire is out. Papa says you're the only one man in the valley who might do it. Before I said I was afraid your father may interrupt this beautiful dream. I guess he already has, huh? Not Papa. That ghastly fire. There's nothing anyone can do about it now. But everything, Cherie. You said it yourself. One must do something about his dreams. Tomorrow. If you would but promise that. Promise what, Michel? Take the nitroglycerin. Papa says you're the one, the best one to do it. And... What do you say? I say anything, Shirley. Including yes? Including yes. <laughs> Funny, I was afraid that my manners wouldn't be good enough for you. Hi, 
thought that would bring us a speedy recovery. Nobility, huh? Well, I've had smoother deals put to me by dance hall girls. And even they weren't peddled by their fathers. Monsieur. It's Mr. Barclay to you, fella. Monsieur, you misunderstood. And your insinuation is insulting. Is it? Well, you might be interested to know, Marquis, that you didn't have to drag your daughter through the mud. My brothers and I had decided to take that nitro before I came here this evening. The poor. Is he, Papa? Of course. Nouveau riche. Bourgeois. I should have anticipated that they would try to protect their money. Nouveau riche, bourgeois. But do they value their money more highly than we value ours? Papa, what did we just prove? Answer me. Tell me. I want to know. Where was our nobility? How dare you ask me that? She just asked me to do give me the right. Papa, how are we better than they are? When you introduce me as a right honorable Michel de la Chaise, what am I supposed to be proud of? One thousand years of a name that is the history of France. Did the first La Chaise do more than the Barclays have done? If this was a monarchy, wouldn't Nick be a count? A uh, Claude? How Dare you put us on the same level with him. The same level? Who's got more dignity now, he or you? I said it, Papa. Convince him he should go. Shouldn't we be happy? He's going. Shall we drink to success? You won't mind using his glass, will you? You're emotional. Tomorrow you will see things in a different light. Jared, I got some bad news. When that wagon blew up, it cleaned out everything in sight for a half a mile. I'm not surprised. Including the Lasso Bridge. Only way up to that fire now is by the Yuba Trail. That's twice as far. And a lot rougher. You'll have to move twice as fast if you're going to get there in time to do any good. some scenes from part two of Explosion. You ain't no little bride, you know. You're back here working. Make me sick! That's a minute. This one's leaking. Now, what are you trying to hide from me? But I promise. Silas, you know I am going into town, and you know I hate the prizes. Your son's going to blow a fire breed. Don't let him get away now, here. Yeah? With these two horses coming down on top of me, I was about to say the same to you. Yeah! at advertisements? You've been away from town too long. That's the first time you've been right in two months. Tell me some more about them gold nuggets, Gabe. I only said that there was some good pay in mines around here, so the pecking should have been real good. All right, well, we tried your way, now we try mine. I'd like to see what one of them corsets looks like when it's all filled out. 
That sort of fun takes the kind of gold dust we didn't find. Uh, we can't come up no emptier than we have. How far is Sacramento? For me, six months in jail. The sheriff made that real clear if he ever saw me again. What about Frisco? Hey, I know a better place. That's closer. You ever been to Stockton? The girls are prettier in Frisco. Yeah, so are they in Reno. And I'm a dead man if I show my face in either place. Just take it from me, Gabe. They never pull in the sidewalks in Stockton. Well, I'm ready for anything. Let's get going. <laughs> Knock the guild off the frame. Now, you're sure about this, Nick? I promise you she'll love it. All right, let's see it. Oh, no, not now. Right now. Well, no, no, I've got it all wrapped up. Now, why can't you wait till we get home? Now, look, this is a present for Mother from all of us. So after I've seen it, I'll tell you whether my name goes on the card or not. Have you seen it? Well, we got Nick's word. It's a good picture. Yeah, well, I'll take his word for hoof and mouth disease, but art is another matter. Well, now that you put it that way, you want to do it or shall I? Allow me. I do all the work and I get all the complaints. of a roundup. Now there's something she really needs. I like it. You paid too much for it. What do you mean I paid too much for it? The fellow down in the gallery said this, uh, this fellow here, Charles Russell, well, when he dies, it's gonna be worth a fortune. Yeah, we take the laws and go gunning for him right now. It's a mighty big calendar. Where's the numbers? What are you talking about, calendar? Why, they're giving them away at the store. <laughs> I'm taking the first train back to San Francisco. Hey, wait a minute, Nick. We've got the original here. Seems to me that this makes that the valuable picture. Lucked out again. What do you mean, lucked out again? I told you I liked it. Come on, let's get it on home. Mrs. Barkley asked me to stop at the Anderson Ranch for something. I guess it'll take me about an hour before I'm back. Oh, good. You go on, Silas. Now that we're big art collectors, uh, our celebration seems to be in order. Wrap it up, Nick. Wrap it up, Silas. Ah, mighty fancy clothes. Always dressed for Sunday. Well, that's what separates aristocrats from us colonials. Well, I always was partial to thoroughbreds. Now, you're not going to go make a jackass out of yourself again, are you? Well, I just might. Hey, would you look at them corset advertisements? You've been away from town too long. It's the first time you've been right in two months. Tell me some more about them gold nuggets, Gabe. I only said that there was some good paying mines around here. So the pecking should have been real good. All right, well, we tried your way, now we try mine. 
I'd like to see what one of them corsets looks like when it's all filled out. That sort of fun takes the kind of gold dust we didn't find. Uh, we can't come up no emptier than we have. How far is Sacramento? For me, six months in jail. The sheriff made that real clear if he ever saw me again. What about Frisco? Hey, I know a better place. That's closer. You ever been to Stockton? The girls are prettier in Frisco. Yeah, so are they in Reno. And I'm a dead man if I show my face in either place. Just take it from me, Gabe. They never pull in the sidewalks in Stockton. Well, I'm ready for anything. Let's get going. All right. Uh... You don't want to knock the guild off the frame. Now, you're sure about this, Nick? I promise you she'll love it. All right, let's see it. Oh, no, not now. Right now. Well, no, no, I've got it all wrapped up. Now, why can't you wait till we get home? Now, look, this is a present for Mother from all of us. So after I've seen it, I'll tell you whether my name goes on the card or not. Have you seen it? Well, we got Nick's word. It's a good picture. Yeah, well, I'll take his word for hoof and mouth disease, but art is another matter. Well, now that you put it that way, you want to do it or shall I? Allow me. I do all the work and I get all the complaints. A picture of a roundup? Now, there's something she really needs. I like it. You paid too much for it. What do you mean I paid too much for it? The fellow down in the gallery said this, uh, this fellow here, Charles Russell, well, when he dies, it's going to be worth a fortune. Can we take the loss or go gunning for him right now? It's a mighty big calendar. Where's the numbers? What are you talking about, calendar? Why, they're giving them away at the store. <laughs> I'm taking the first train back to San Francisco. Hey, wait a minute, Nick. We've got the original here. Seems to me that this makes that the valuable picture. Lucked out again. What do you mean, lucked out again? I told you I liked it. Come on, let's get it on home. Mrs. Barkley asked me to stop at the Anderson Ranch for something. I guess it'll take me about an hour before I'm back. Oh, good. You go on, Silas. Now that we're big art collectors, uh, our celebration seems to be in order. Wrap it up, Nick. Wrap it up, Silas. Ah, mighty fancy clothes. Always dress for Sunday. Well, that's what separates aristocrats from us colonials. Well, I always was partial to thoroughbred. Now, you're not going to go make a jackass out of yourself again, are you? Well, I just might. A dollar, he doesn't get one word out of her. You're on. Get out of here. Take at least four. <laughs> Good morning, mademoiselle. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'd like to ask you a favor. Uh, I'd like to have your opinion on a painting I bought up in San Francisco. 